Hey everyone, so in today's video, I'm going to be planting my tomato and pepper plants into their grow bags. So tomatoes and peppers like warm weather, so you wanna make sure that you are definitely past your average last frost date. You also wanna look at your forecast, and as long as the nighttime temperatures are in the 50s and not dropping down into the 40s, you should be good to plant out your tomatoes and your peppers. So that is what I'm gonna do today, and actually it is almost 90 degrees today. It's definitely abnormal weather here, which I feel like the weather has just been getting more and more up and down as the years go by, but we were in the 50 degree temps just a few days ago. Now we're in the 80s and 90s. We're gonna cool down a bit, I think, next week into like the 60s and 70s, which is kind of my sweet spot. And yes, I am a person who will complain when it's too cold and then complain when it is too hot. But at least I can start to get these plants outside and into their places. So here is what I picked up. And I have started tomatoes in the past. I don't think I've ever started pepper plants in the past, but I really don't do that anymore because I don't grow enough to make it worth starting the seeds. So like the time, the effort that it goes into actually carrying and maintaining and hardening off the seeds that you're growing, and not really worth it when I can just pick up a plant for four or five dollars. So that is what I did. Now, the pepper plant, I went ahead and got the Lady Bell red pepper. I just really like the sweetness of red peppers, so that's what I went with this year. I think last year I did a green pepper plant. I can't remember for sure, but I only really have space for one pepper plant, so I'm choosing the one that I like the best. This one I think I got from Chalet Nursery out in the suburbs, and it smells pretty nice. So I'm gonna get this out. I'm gonna plant this in a seven gallon grow bag. Last year I kind of just threw one in my raised bed because, so the original pepper plant I planted last May, we had a cold spell the end of May, which is not typical, and it actually stunted and damaged the pepper plant. So I got a new one and I planted it in the lowest raised bed, which that bed was just kind of ad hoc, throwing random things together. I think I also had a melon plant in there, so it wasn't really very well planned out. But what I wanna do with all of my veg this year is have them in their own grow bags. So I'm gonna do a seven gallon grow bag for this pepper plant. They should be fine too if you're gonna do like a five gallon grow bag, that should work out well. But again, I just prefer seven gallon if I do have the space. Then, because I only have room for really one tomato plant, I, of course, got two tomato plants. Um, these I got from Gethsemane Garden Center in Chicago, so I got the Super Sweet 100 Tomato. I think both of these varieties are new to me this year. Um, and I also got Sun Sugar. So these are both cherry tomatoes. One is red colored, uh, the other are golden. And over the last few years with tomato plants, I've come to realize, and I don't know if it's Chicago, a rooftop garden, or what it is, but the kind of typical larger sized tomato plants don't do well for me. I think the watering here is just too irregular with the amount of rain that will get heavy rain and then not a lot of rain. So even when I have my drip system up, it's still just too erratic for it. And I get a lot of split tomatoes in the larger ones. So I'm not gonna do that this year because I think I grew a whole tomato plant and got maybe two tomatoes off of it last year, but every time I grow the smaller variety of tomatoes, so cherry tomatoes, grape tomatoes, just tomato plants that have smaller fruit, they always do really well. So limited space, I'm gonna go with what works. Now these, and every time I've grown tomato plants, I plant them in my 30 gallon grow bags. I have in the past planted two tomatoes in one, so I think that's what I'm gonna do this year just in order to have empty grow bags for my flowers. So I basically have three 30 gallon grow bags. I'll take you outside and show you those in just a second. I'm gonna put the tomatoes in the center ones and I'm gonna grow giant dahlias on the two bags on either side. So I didn't wanna use two whole separate 30 gallon bags just for one tomato plant each. I will try to make sure I keep these pruned. So both of these are indeterminate tomato types. So indeterminate means that it's going to continue to grow and get fairly large. I think they can get up to even like 10 feet or above, but they typically end up somewhere around like five or six feet. If you have a smaller container, it's not gonna get quite as large as it would if it had a larger container. Um, so these you wanna make sure you have a good size container for any sort of indeterminate tomato if you are going to grow them in a container or in a pot. Um, I would recommend not going smaller really than 10 gallons, um, and then the more space you have, 
the more space they'll have to grow. So these are going to share a 30 gallon bag, so about 15 gallons of space for each of them. I'm gonna to try to keep the more center area where the two plants are touching pruned a little bit more just to have good airflow, make it easier to spot any pests or any issues like that. But I think they should be happy together. I also need to grab my two tomato cages in order to set these up as well. And I do typically use a cage for my peppers. Um, one, the height they do get, I think the one last year got maybe like three feet tall, but with the wind up here, I want to make sure that I have some support for my pepper plants as well. Tomato plants, you definitely need a cage unless you want a sprawling bush-like tomato plant. So I think that's everything as far as what I'm going to plant. Let's go ahead and head out into the almost 90 degree weather and get these into their bags. And I'll talk a little bit about what I'm using in the grow bags as well, because I'm doing a few different things with the actual soil in the bag. Here are the three 30 gallon bags. So I'm gonna do zinnias, the two tomato plants, zinnias. I'm not ready to move my zinnias out yet, but in this bed. So I wanna talk a little bit about what I've done with the soil. So I've grown tomatoes in these bags since I think 2019, we moved in 2020, so I had to empty out the bags, start with fresh soil. So 2020, 2021, now 2022. Basically, I've had some of the same soil in here. Now, when I pull the tomato plants at the end of the season, the root balls are pretty large, so that takes a good chunk of soil out. And what I did differently last year is I basically cut up any of the plant waste from plants in my garden, anything that didn't have any sort of disease or issues like that. And I just left it in this bag and then covered it with a layer of soil and digging down, it seems like for the most part, it's decomposed. So hopefully that's added a little bit of nutrients to it. I'd also say the bag was maybe filled up to here, kind of this spring. And I've just added in this compost and then fresh potting soil to fill that all the way up to the top. So I'm hoping that that is enough good nutrition for it. I'm also gonna plant with the biotone starter into the holes that I dig. And then of course I fertilize regularly. Um, I use the Fox Farm brand of fertilizers. So I'm kind of seeing as I go with this process as far as is there a point when I am gonna have to completely remove all the soil and restart or by adding in the compost, by adding in the garden waste, will that kind of keep the soil nutritious enough for my plants? So we shall see. Um, but what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and get the two tomato plants planted. Some other things I wanted to mention just as far as actually planting these. So you can go ahead and remove the branches at the lower portion and then plant the stem actually in the soil because basically along this whole main stem of your tomato plant roots will grow if you bury it and sometimes roots grow even if you didn't bury it um, i also like to remove the branches on the lower part as well to avoid any splash back when i'm watering the plants you know usually i'm using a drip system but when it rains for example it just lessens the likelihood of any sort of diseases, fungal issues that you might have. So I like to remove these lower leaves as well. So there is a bit of room between where you're going to be watering on the soil and then the actual leaves themselves. Um, and then I might even come in and prune, you know, a few more as I kind of get an idea of how the plant looks once it starts to grow. But I am just gonna clean up all along the bottom of this stem here. I think that's good for now. Like I said, I'll probably come in later and take these off. I will also be pruning the suckers. I have a whole video on that if you want to check that out. I'll link that below. But that's one of those tasks that I have very good intentions at the beginning of the growing season of doing and then I kind of stopped doing it around like late July, August. Um, but let's go ahead and I'm just going to kind of roughly position that one there. So this one's going to be sun sugar and then this one is the super sweet 100. Same thing. I'm just going to clean up these leaves along the lower portion of the branch here. I'm gonna leave this one for now just because I don't wanna take off too much from the plant, but again, I will come back in later and probably prune those off as well. So this one, roughly about there, I think should be good. So they are, like if you're spacing these in a garden, for example, closer than you would ideally want them. But like I mentioned, I've done this before 
with two plants in this size grow bag and it worked out well. So I'm going to go ahead and plant them in the positions that they are. If I come to regret it later, I will learn for next year, but as long as I keep them pretty well pruned, I think we'll be okay. So let's go ahead, I'm going to dig the holes, put in some of the biotone, and then get them planted and watered in with their cages. So these both look so tiny in this giant bag right now, but if you've ever grown tomatoes, you know how big they get very quickly. So I did already put the cages in. You wanna make sure you put the cages in at the time of planting, just because one, it's easier to position them, but also you don't want the root system to get large, jam a cage in and uh, potentially damage some of the roots. So it's just better for the plant to get the cages into place now. So next I'm going to pot up the pepper plant again in a seven gallon grow bag, and then I will go ahead and water everything in. Now the pepper plant is going to go into its own new seven gallon grow bag. So this one, I already put in fresh potting soil. I'm going to add in compost and then we'll get this planted with the biotone, just like we did with the two tomato plants. So basically I'm just adding an inch thick layer of compost onto the top of the soil, then going ahead and mixing that all the way down into the bag and spilling some in the process. Next up, putting in the biotone. And then adding the plant. Everything is now watered in. Like I mentioned, I added a cage to my pepper plant as well. It's a much shorter cage than I have for my tomato plants. But everything is looking good. I feel like when I finally put something in these larger bags, that's when I know summer is on the way because it's typically my tomatoes or larger flowers. So I'm really excited for all of these to start to grow. I have run very quickly back inside into the air conditioning and part of what I wanted to talk about is why I decided to plant them today and at the time that I did. So right now it is late afternoon, um, they're just, the plants that I just planted are just starting to be in the shade um, and I'd rather plant them in either the evening or very early morning just so I'm not planting them right at noon where they're getting the hottest sun. Um, I don't want to go to a very extreme weather right when I plant them into their pots. I'm also choosing today because we've been in the 80s and the 90s the last couple days whereas tomorrow we're going back down into the high 60s 70s for the next few days so i'm getting them in the ground this afternoon they're in the shade tomorrow when they're getting the full sun they'll be in a slightly cooler but still warm enough day for them before we jump back up into the very hot summer temperatures so i like to be just be a little bit extra safe with the plants not planting them when i know they're going to get a lot of extreme weather very quickly so hopefully those start to grow and i will see a lot of green in the garden things are changing very quickly i feel like we're in just like a constant state of garden chaos right now but once everything gets moved outside it should calm down a bit although it might just be chaotic all season long and that is perfectly fine with me uh, but thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next video bye